are now live on channel eight and YouTube. Good evening, the time is 6.30 and I call this meeting of the Templeton Advisory Committee to order. I will call the roll at this time. Uh, would you please, uh, as I call the roll, please note that you are present and, uh, and where you are uh, taking this meeting from. Uh, Mr. John Kaplis. Present, Town Hall. Um, Ms. Beverly Bartolomeo. Present. Mr. Will Spring. Present at Town Hall. Ms. April Cover. Present at Town Hall. Mr. Matthew Rivard, present at Town Hall. Um, note here. that um, <laughs> note that all of our members are in town hall this evening. We do have a quorum. Five members are here, so we can proceed with business. Um, any votes that will be taken this evening as a result of being all in town hall will be a simple yay nay vote rather than a full roll call. At this time, I would ask everyone to please join in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The usual housekeeping items. This uh, meeting is being broadcast on uh, TCTV Channel 8 and over our YouTube channel. Um, if any comments are made on the YouTube feed, those comments will be made public record and we will also uh, respond to them as we go along. So please, if you have any comments, please make them. Um, the meeting agenda and meeting materials were posted to www.templetonma.gov 48 hours in advance of the meeting as required per open meeting laws. Um, and if you are looking at the meeting materials online, please note that the files that are presented online as well correspond to the numbers in the agenda in order to help you easily follow along with our uh, proceedings this evening. So, having gotten through all that, uh, having gotten through all that, uh, that, uh, that uh, junk that I have to say at the beginning in order to get, in order to keep us in good standing, we move to Agenda item three, approval of the meeting minutes. Item 3A, the meeting minutes from July 1st, 2021. I'll accept the motion to approve them as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for July 1st, 2021 and July 15th, 2021 as presented. I have a motion to accept both the meeting minutes from July 1st and July 15th as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second, second it. Sorry. Well, we haven't reviewed them. We're just about it. So I have a motion and a second, motion by April Cover, seconded by John Kaplis to accept the meeting minutes from both July 1st and July 15th as accepted or as presented. Um, and while we review, I'll ask if there's any discussion. I haven't read them yet. And if there's any uh, if there's anything that needs to be changed, we'll take that as an amendment to the main motion. Kind of discussion. I'm yeah. just wondering if we could get those before the meeting to, re to review if, if it's possible. I know that may not be possible. Well, they were um, they were posted and they were posted ahead of time. I didn't. Get that. I didn't read. They were posted on the website ahead of time. I didn't see them. Oh, I didn't. They know. were there. I know they were I there. Well, I put them on there. I'm not going to vote something I don't know. With the uh, email on this. with the agenda, it was all all the all the uh, files are posted there. I went through that. I didn't see that. I know they're there. I do it. I'm I I'm very I'm, very. I'm not, I'm not questioning. I know. I, I, that's, that's okay. Yeah, I, because I printed out the agenda, yeah. and that's what I got was the agenda. Okay. I guess I'm used to getting them in the email. That's why. Maybe I missed it. Because I know April did them and yep. I couldn't figure out how I missed them. I know I didn't delete them. No. I, I know it's the same thing. I, just, I didn't see them. So I just assume we, we, we vote on them at the next meeting. If you want to take the time to go you can, uh, you can make the motion to table to the next meeting if you so desire. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to make a motion to table them till the next meeting. I have a motion to table. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion to have a table and I have a second. Is there any discussion on said motion? So we'll have to figure out how I missed that. 
I don't know. I, I don't know how we got missed, but I, I understand exactly what you're saying. That's fine. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the motion to table? Hearing none, all those in favor, please vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Did the ayes. Did you see them? No. I, mean, I, I read I read giant. Oh, yeah. The ayes have it. The motion carries at eight at 6 35 p.m. to table the minutes from July 1st and July 15th to the meeting on August 19th, 2021. Yep. There's no correspondence this evening. Um, note under old business on the meeting on August 19th, 2021, our next meeting, we will review the um, advisory committee policy and reserve fund transfers for uh, final approval and, uh, and, uh, and posting to the website at that point that was given to you guys, that was given to the committee two weeks ago for review. Uh, and if there's any uh, questions, comments, changes that we'd like to have made, I'd ask you please forward those to me. And uh, I will make sure that to uh, advance this to the next business. Yep, that's fine. I motion okay. to advance to ne to new I'll, business. I'll make a motion to advance uh, the uh, the uh, reserve policy and document till the meeting on the nineteenth. Yep. Any I'll second it? I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Just a, a thing. I just looked at uh, other communities to make sure that they were we're still in line with them. Mm -hmm. and I, I find that we still are. Okay. I, I was looking a lot better, but that's that's a discussion on the nineteenth. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those please all those in favor, please vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. And that is carried over to the August 19th meeting. Um, under new business, um, I was I did put the final BVA on here um, because I was advised by the TA at the time that it would be ready. Um, it was received today at four o'clock. Therefore, I am not going to ask us to review at this meeting. Therefore, I will entertain a motion to uh, table this until August 19th, 2021. Make a motion to table until the 19th. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion to table the uh, review of the final yes, BBA have, until the... Just a, just a couple of comments. Yep. Is, uh, uh, I didn't see this on the... And, I, and on, I know the entire packet was given to the selectmen. Did the selectmen have it beforehand because it was not part of the packet? Because I checked the packet. It came uh, after the packet uh, it came on Monday. It came on Monday? Yeah. I, 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 I'd like to take an end up seeing that, that the selectmen had at least a, an opportunity up front that the next time the BVA happens in, in that report, if we can get it at the same time, I mean, this is the finances of the community. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bennett. Oh, and um, for the for the for the benefit of people at home, we do have four people in the room with us tonight as guests. I have uh, I have select board member Jeffrey Bennett. I have select board member Tim Toth. I have NRSD school committee member Justice Graves, and I have the uh, I have the TA uh, Adam Lamontagne in the room with us this evening. Mr. Bennett, please go ahead. You will, like, you, will, you will like this. Uh, by policy, we are supposed to have it by Friday. So you didn't get it on time either. So that stuff, all of those reports, yeah. any outside information? Because I saw all the rest of them. But yeah, you, should, you guys should have got that. I, I missed that. I just. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if, if at the same time you get them that we can get them. This, that's my first question. Yeah. I would have missed. The, the, the other the other one I see this is not finalized, and this is I guess for the administrator. When we do get the finalized one, uh, that's probably more pertinent for us uh, as this committee if we could get that. And because in the last couple of years we did not receive the final. I we got the we got the preliminary and not finalized, but then we never got the finalized. I think that came today, didn't it? No, that's no, not that's no. not final. Oh, okay. No, that's not final. If you look on page four or five on that right on the top, it says not final. <laughs> Second week of August, generally the, yeah. the final. Yeah, I know. I know. We we didn't receive it a couple times. So. Because I would have downloaded that today and looked at it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. The meet uh, the budget versus actual. Yeah. So we should expect that during the second week of August. Yes, which means yeah. it should be ready for our meeting on the nineteenth without a problem. All right. So we can look. Yeah. So we'll get the finalized one rather than the preliminary. And we'll be able to review that. Okay, correct. So it was my hope that 
we would have had it completed by Thursday and to get you the completed version. Um, next time, what we'll do is uh, I'll talk with the accountant on sending those financial reports to the advisory committee. Uh, so when the select board receives them, um, if they, the advisory committee can be cc as well. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I know that in the past years, um, uh, July is a little early. You, you close the books on the 15th, and I can understand going to August. Sometime in August is is when we would like to see the, at least I'd like to see the final and not just the, uh, the uh, non-final one. You know? I mean, I wasn't too happy at the last meeting because we received some documents uh, for the MSBA on Templeton Elementary School, and I had to add that late to the agenda as well. But I, I gave consideration to the fact that I believe would be the longest ongoing school project in the state, and I didn't want to delay that any further. Um, and I appreciate the select board uh, consideration in getting that so we could get that signed and off to the MSBA for them to start their auditing process um, on that closeout. My hope was to dissolve the Temple Economic School Building Committee by the fall town meeting. I don't believe that will be the case. Um, so my thoughts are I will not be included on the warrant, but I wanted to give an update on that as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things that I wasn't too happy with. Um, because I like to get the packet all completed by Thursday, and I really pressed the department head to try to get that in in time. Um, but I could express, I, I just want to express my frustration as well on some, yeah. some matters that I would have liked to see sooner. I understand some folks have a lot more going on, but at the same time, by policy, as Selectman Bennett mentioned, it should have been it by Friday. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's as, as a, at least a member of this committee, I, I don't, I can't speak for everybody else. I look at the the uh, selectman's agenda for things that, that uh, are being presented that they can get some source of, of information rather than always be here. And I can tell you, I talked with him quite a bit, and we express our concerns over certain things as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You can't, you can't get paperwork the day of the meeting mm -hmm. and try to cram it all in. It just mm -hmm. doesn't work that way. And then just go. Has happened too much in the past. Yeah. Which is why I immediately, when I saw that come in this afternoon at four o'clock, I said, no, I'm not going to. There's no there's no way that anyone would have had a chance to reasonably review that with uh, with a uh, you know with enough uh, time to be able to formulate questions and, and determine what they wanted to ask. So yeah, better off to move it out for three weeks. And again, we'll have with any luck, we'll have the final at that point and we'll be able to we'll have time to do a uh, to do a full review with a good should, yeah we should yeah exactly exactly mr Tote, mr. Tote go ahead follow on to that we we accepted the late submission mm -hmm. only because it is in fact the longest running project mm -hmm. and they meet every other month at the msba while we are hopeful it is highly unlikely we will make the august agenda yeah. which now pushes up to, to october, october or yeah. december and December is going to be very close to change some of our outstanding debt yeah. and make some arrangements. So in order to move the process forward, it was a very conscious decision. Yeah. Even though it was late, let's take it, let's make it and work with it. Makes 100% sense in that respect, yes. Mm -hmm. This has a financial implication all around. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. um, any other discussion on the motion to table the BVA until the meeting on August 19th? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor, please vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries at 6.44 p.m. We now move to discussion. We have two items for discussion this evening. The first is an item that I said that I would take on, and that is a proposed article for the fall special town meeting. Um, I would like to take this in two parts because there are two there are two things that um, I would that we that we should review. Um, the first is a change to nine point or to nine dash three vacancies. Um, and I tried to write this up exactly as how it would be presented in the as how it would be presented in the um, in the uh, in the uh, what was it in the warrant. So um, so I'm going to read it and uh, and then we can discuss the first portion. 
So the anticipated motion will be, I move to adopt the following bylaw changes in relation to the advisory committee editing division one bylaws, part one administrative legislation, chapter nine boards, committees, commissions and committees as follows. Section 9-3 vacancies. If a member resigns for, um, so we're keeping the entire text of 9.3 vacancies as it currently stands, adding the following sentence at the end. Vacancies shall be filled in the order in which the seats become available. Okay. And the reason for this is that when, um, and then this is through no fault of Mr. Kaplis or anybody else, um, is that when Mr. Kaplis's seat was filled, there was confusion as to how we should fill seats because we had multiple vacancies of varying ages. And this is basically to clarify that particular comment and that going forward, if this were to be approved, oldest first. Well, so. It doesn't really matter if you have a vacancy. We have a discussion on this. Thing. Yes, absolutely. That's the reason it's here. I, I, <laughs> I ended up sending you a thing that I'd like to take and see us go back to mm -hmm. the way the, the vacancies were addressed mm -hmm. and they would be filled by the advisory committee completely completely the reason i say that is and and, and just just to clarify that you're, you're saying it would be filled by the, the advisory committee completely outside of directly after town meeting town uh, meeting town meeting right so town, town the, meeting the town meeting, meeting the they had, would, get, would get would get 30 days yeah. and then any any vacancy after that resignation right. whatever the case may be would just come here yes the reason i say this since i'm a long long-standing member I'm going to give you a little history as to how we uh, address that. A brief, a a brief, please. Yes, I will. I will. Thank you. All the, just about, and I won't name the, the names, but all the vacancies that happened were ending up not made by the, the moderator. The, the, the committee went out and actually saw out people. I know that Bev did, I did, and some of the other members actually sought out members. We actually went to the, uh, Selectman's office to take and see if any of you had put in. We actually went to the moderator, and the moderator basically had nobody. He's not in a position, he appoints. He's not in a position to go out and seek people to, to do that. that. That's never been the, his job. When I say that the committee filled it in, I, I think I can think of at least six or eight vacancies that between the members that were filled, actually going out and seeking members. So I'd like to take and see that back because I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to put that onus on the moderator because I, 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 I've talked to the moderator and I know he's a busy, busy man. He's not around till late at night he, he, in his work. I understand that. And I just don't want us to get into any positions where we have to wait a long time to take and fill the vacancies. And I know that there was a there was a question um, from uh, Mr. Kaplis that was discussed or that was brought up earlier in the week about what the actual moderator if we needed to bring the moderator in on this. Mm -hmm. And if you um, if you take a look at it, I provided the uh, I provided the document mm -hmm. in the packet. Part one. Uh, if you go to the MGL Part One, Title Seven, Chapter Thirty Nine, Section Fifteen, Moderators' Powers and Duties. Um, the moderator's powers and duties are very, very limited in all honesty. Um, uh, in the town of Templeton's case, we grant the moderator this uh, power. Point. Point. Yeah. We, gra we grant the, moder the, the power of the moderator to appoint. Mm -hmm. It's not listed in the Massachusetts general law. So it's not a job that lasts for six months right. because if he wasn't available, right. the next town meeting, we the body can appoint the person out of the audience. Yeah. So let me, let, can I just talk about what else I found in other yep. communities? Other communities, and, and, I, and I didn't take this lightly as to putting, having us fill vacancies. I looked at other communities and I, I was astonished, <laughs> as, astonished as to find out that Hubbiston actually elects advisory members or finance committees at their town meeting. And I looked at that and I went, Wow, uh, the town of Sterling has a very unique situation, unlike ours. The, the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and the moderator also, as a committee, appoint. 
And then you end up having a community such as Upton. The selectmen have, have two appointees. The uh, moderator has two appointees. And there's one that's elected. And then Cohasset, I didn't understand this. They, they did it by a, a committee, a Troika, T-R-O-I-K-A. And I went, I have no idea what that is, folks. <laughs> then I saw Harvard, they did it by their charter. And then Lancaster and Great Barrington, two other communities that are close to us in size, they stated they, they, they end up closing the vacancies by Mass General Law, Section 11. And that's pointing back to the uh, appointing authority. And that's whoever they had as appointing right. uh, authority. But I did find three communities, Rutland, Townsend, and Bolton, Bolton that have it, that they fill the advisory fills the vacancy. So, I mean, uh, I so, see other communities doing that. So what we're trying to say here is that there's a bunch of different ways communities do it. We yeah. do have some communities that are that do it by the committee itself, yeah. which so that would be a consistent move. Yes. Actually, um, and yes, Bar uh, Beth, go ahead. Um, I agree with Will. Okay. Actually, people come to us also. We don't hunt them down. Mm -hmm. A lady came to me this morning and said she's interested in being on the board. Mm -hmm. So I told her to fill out an information yep, uh, fill out the form, form on, on the website. Yep. Now, she can come here and the group can vote on it. Yep. I've yep. never seen us deny anyone. Yep. There were ladies, people that came and they didn't stay a long time because they moved. Yep. But I wouldn't want to have to tell someone to track down this moderator mm -hmm. because like Will says, not everybody lives in town. They're not home seven days a week. Yep. I just think it, the process is simpler and cleaner and we've it's been successful yeah. and you have more people that can go out and see as an example and i i, I mm -hmm. like to take and use you as an example would you have uh, gone for the advisory had you not been approached by myself and a few, a few other members after the annual town meeting it made the decision a lot easier yeah. i was probably going to anyways but it made the decision a lot yeah. easier yeah. But if you had to chase somebody down, it would make it a lot different if you went a busy life, which I imagine you do. So I think that. So so let me do this then. Um, I'm not expecting a vote tonight. This is under okay. discussion. Yeah. Go ahead, Doug. Mr. Chair, how many other communities and boards in the community are voted in by their own people? We just told you. How many well, in this town? We'd have I'd have to look it up. Oh, not. Yeah. So they're either voted in by the people or they're appointed by the board of selectmen. This is the only committee that actually votes its own people. Um, and it's not unusual. No, it's not. No, yeah. it's not. I, as you as you well versed yeah. in, yeah. the other communities are doing a you know similar similar action. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know. Changing you know, changing bylaws is a is a is a huge thing, mm -hmm. especially to no, me. Really? Yeah, yeah, bylaw changes no, are huge. Really? Uh, you never did that before, did you? No, 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 not me. And I'm not talking uh, about. Changing the bylaw, I'm saying go back to what we have. Yeah. Well, then that would that would actually change the bylaw. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It, it, it would if you want to look at yeah. it that way. Yes. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it actually, would. we're different as a board because we do not answer to any other committees. But we answer to the we people. We answer to the right. people. We answer to the people. No, yeah. you're 100 right. Yeah. So, I just want to make that point. So I'm going to um, what I've written down here, and I'm going to go through this real quickly to see if the committee uh, agrees with this. So <clears throat> under 9.3 vacancies, I'm going to read the whole thing and you guys can tell me if you think this is where we want to go with it, because what I'll do is I'll edit this mm -hmm. and bring it back for the August 19th meeting for a vote of approval at that point where it's under discussion tonight. There's no votes on it. I just want to make I want to I wanted I wanted to hear the uh, I wanted to hear the committee's uh, decision on or what the committee wanted to you wanted to see on this. So. I suggest this, if a member resigns for any reason, or if a member is absent from five consecutive meetings of the advisory committee, except in case of illness, the position shall be deemed to be vacant and filled as here and provided. At this point, we would strike the sentences. The advisory committee chairman shall, not modify the, shall notify the moderator to determine if there are any interested town, or any interested town registered voters to fill a vacancy. The moderator shall be given 30 days to fill a vacant position by appointing a person to complete the unexpired term in the event that the moderator is unable to fill the vacancy, at that comma, yep. 
That's where the strike stops. And then we would be capital T, the advisory committee shall fill said vacancy by vote and a tested copy of which shall be sent by the advisory committee secretary to the town clerk. The term of office of any person chosen by the advisory committee to fill a vacancy shall expire at the final adjournment of the next succeeding annual town meeting. The moderator at that time shall appoint a successor to complete the unexpired yeah, term. And, and then and then my my suggestion would be deleted the bold and uh, the yeah. bold and the italics That's would be deleted the okay because so. there what does everyone think about that bev you think you sound good to you will no i can't agree with that because i i see that the moderator you're putting him in a position where right. he's out of town a lot right and and, and, but, and by doing this it basically takes the moderator out of it except for at annual time meeting it's more of a bond no it, it says 30 days to fill a position. I just I, oh you change oh I, I'm saying I'm I'm saying strike the 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 uh, where is it I'm saying start here strike the next two and a half sentences oh, to okay. here you're saying strike that okay. yes strike it yeah. oh okay that's okay it. I didn't understand that's okay thank no, you that's okay clarifying. that's okay that's okay so are you in agreement now yes April yes yeah. yes John no no okay what is your what is your concern well I just think that you know we. I mean, the moderator is an elected official, regardless of his time and space as a civilian appointment, should have no bearing on who he or she should be in contact with after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, to completely take the moderator out of this, other than 30 days after a town meeting, I think, I don't think, uh, I, don't, I don't agree with Can that. I clarify for Mr. Kaplis? Sure. Uh, when we've had it as the, the, select, the advisory committee mm -hmm. filling the vacancy, yeah. we've, like I said, we always go, the first place we go is to the selectman's office, see anybody has a, 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 a thing in. Yeah, the which, second is what place, the, which is what we're asking the moderator to do now anyway. Right. The second place is we actually go to the moderator. And in, in all my experience, the for the nine years, we have gone to those things and not had any, any uh, inputs from them. It's been the members that have gone out. Or the people have come to the members. Or the, right. Of, I can I can name a couple of people that well, at least one that I know of that saw sought me out after the annual town meeting. Yeah. He was a great he was a great member and he was also a, a great chairman. Yep. So that's you know I mean make it as less complicated mm -hmm. as you can because there's no need of it. We're voting on this tonight. Correct? No 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 no. Yeah, I need, I need some time to think about that's it. fine. That's fine. No, that, we're not voting on this tonight. This is. Uh, this is, uh, this, like I said, this is meant to be discussion tonight. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, okay. Um, now, the second portion of it is the review of the proposed warrant article, section 9.4. Um, the changes here are strictly in the days required by the committee to report for annual town meeting and for special town meeting. With all respect to Mr. Bennett for the uh, for the uh, for the article that he is that he has proposed to the select board for the uh, the small town meeting already placed. Um, the article that Mr. Bennett proposed is to delete from section twenty two point six the language that currently states two days before the annual town meeting or the special town meeting, right. and go with what's in nine point four right now which states five days before the annual town meeting and then four days before a special, okay? Um, I am proposing here that we align 9.4 with 22.6. And the reason I'm proposing that is um, the, uh, is the, um, okay, hang on, um, the way the, Town has to submit this to has to submit the um, the uh, what is it the uh, the warrants to warrants, us. Yeah. Um, they have for a special town meeting specifically. They have fifteen days. Fourteen. Fourteen. Thank you. They have to. They at minimum have to give us fourteen days. Okay. If the town were to give us the bare minimum, okay, it would be nearly impossible for us to hold a. Pre a pre-town meeting mm -hmm. and process our recommendations and write the report and get it submitted with the four days to go. We basically have a 10-day window. 
Um, now, I've spoken to Mr. Lamontagne. He says that they're going to get this to us as soon as humanly possible. The likelihood is it'll be, I mean, it will be weeks in advance of the fall town meeting. However, my problem is, is not so much Mr. Lamontagne, is the next person in that chair or the person in that chair following that. And at that point, it may be different. Okay. We have not done a good job on some of this as to make sure that it, it fits everything mm -hmm. because uh, at the last special town meeting, we didn't make it. Right. We actually had the pre town meeting uh, on, on the uh, less than four days. And with the, the actual uh, requirements that they can end up re having a report went out in less than three days. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's a problem. And I, I, I don't, I don't like to have a, a bylaw go out that we end up having the potential to break. Yeah. It's basically, should, basically setting us it. up to fail. None of, none of the, <laughs> the boards or committees should ever end up trying to violate a bylaw. If you don't like the bylaw, then change it. Yeah. So, so anyways, that's what I have proposed in section 9.4 is that 9.4 would align to 22.6. And it would be two days in front of the annual town meeting and two days in front of the special town meeting in order to in order for us to report. I agree. Okay. Um, so I have agreement from Mr. Spring. I agree with that. You have agree, I have agreement there, I have agreement here, I and I have agreement there. Okay, so 9.4 check is the way that I'm gonna bring that back in three weeks. Um, 9.3, um, Mr. Kaplis, please take the time that you need to review it and let me know um, uh, if you could let me know what you want, what your thoughts are a week before our next meeting, so that I can finalize this and bring it. Okay, because I because I've spoken to Mr. Lamontagne. Mm -hmm. If we approve it at the nineteenth, I can submit it to you, and it will be able to make the warrant without a problem. The draft warrant. The draft warrant. Correct. Yes. Okay. The select board final. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. Of course, the select board had the final, but the bottom line is, I want to make sure it gets to you, so it can go to the select board, so that it can. Be voted on to be put into the, be put into the warrant. And the problem problem is with getting a draft. I've seen it in the past. Things change, and it's no good for us to take go through at least reviewing it or starting the process if things change. We haven't. We don't have enough sufficient time to to take and end up going back and looking at everything. All right. Yes, Mr. Bennett, go ahead. This cap was made uh, about committees that appoint. Yeah. The advisory committee is unique yeah. in that, according to the laws and bylaws, they are appointed by the moderator from the get go. Right. The laws of the state and, and our bylaws are pretty specific about when you have openings in other committees. Mm -hmm. Community preservation committee, for example, some are elected, some are appointed. The appointing authority all these other committees even failure to elect yep. with the exception of the board of select mm -hmm. the board of select can't point on the right, 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 right. but failure to elect cemeteries the appointing authority right. is whoever's on the cemetery commission one two and the board of select all the, the other appointed committees are all appointed by the board of select that's why they don't appoint their members there is one skips my mind uh there is one committee where if a town meeting vote i think it's open space don't quote me i will find out <laughs> send okay. it to you, you but thank you there is a provision in the bylaw that committee was created that they may appoint members midterm if somebody leaves uh, and i found that out when they came in the middle of the year i think you're right i think you're right uh, so to clarify so people are watching on yeah. TV. Advisory can appoint mm -hmm. because they are unique. They're independent of right. all the other ones. And they're the supposed other, to be the like other that. Committees and groups yeah. are covered by mass general right. law by the appointing authority. It's like I said, there's that one that one caveat. I'm aware of it. I, I will get that to you when I get home. Okay. So yep. that's my point on that. And the day thing, I still intend to ask the board. To change that mm -hmm. town meeting by law to eliminate the date. So you don't have to look in four places yeah. to find Agreed. because it used yeah. to be, and Will is, is aware of this, yeah, right. uh, that 
at the time for the warrant mm -hmm. and, and the posting of it, yeah. there was like four yeah. different bylaws and a couple of them said yeah. different time frames. Yeah. All, and, and the codification was supposed to and, smooth all And in all honesty, your uh, your article just deletes that line. So even if our article were to pass, it would just delete that line, and we, we'd still it would st our article would still go through and one place we'll right line. exactly. It's just it's going to be one place. So 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 if both pass, it's okay. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. like I said, it's got the advisory committee under the advisory bylaw. Right. Yeah. Then the town meeting law advisory has to do right. Exactly. Uh, align one, one put it place, in one place. Yeah. Align it. Yeah. It and it makes more everything. sense to pick and have it under advisory mm. because that's a commit. That's a commitment from us that we have to have it done. Yeah. That was piecemeal, you know, over the years. And yeah. you, you we didn't do a good job. A lot of small towns. Yeah. Same yeah. book. Same book. Thank you, so, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. We appreciate thank it. You. All right. Okay. We're done with the bylaw for tonight. Uh, and uh, and thank you for the uh, good discussion on that. Uh, let's go to our next item, which is item 7B. There were four questions posed by April Cover, our scribe, uh, to the town administrator, which I forwarded on Monday, July 26th. Response uh, was expected by Friday, July 30th by the bylaw, which we have received. They were received today um, by Mr. Lamontane. I am gonna ask him to come to the hot seat at this point and he can explain the answers to these questions. So, Mr. Lamontane, I tried to turn the heat down on that thing. <laughs> I don't know that it worked, but I tried. Um, so first thing, uh, question number one, we wanted to follow up with the TA in regards to the deed for Gilman Waite and whether or not it's being revised, who owns it, who can use it. So please be my guest on question one. So on question number one, what I did was I heard discussion about this. Um, I had Luann, our deputy assessor, pull the deed, which I fixed as a, yep. an exhibit to the uh, document you have in front of you. Uh, right now, it's currently not being re revised. Okay. Um, I want to be clear. I'm not going to make something up that's not yep. the case. Um, and the interesting part about this is granted to the inhabitants of the town of Templeton. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not the governing body. Now, I did talk with town council briefly about this on, as I was talking about other matters. Mm -hmm. And certainly, um, I guess I, I, I'm wondering where the question is of what what we're looking at to revise within the the deed yep I'll so, let, so i could i'll let miss cover answer that yeah i could see your question there um so within the deed right now it states the high school templeton high school first of all we don't need we no longer have a high school mm -hmm. so with that being said does it automatically revert back to the school are we still looking at the regional school district as the high school? And I'm asking that question because the high school sports teams are playing on that field. Mm -hmm. And some of the other teams throughout the town are not playing on that field. So if it's the high school utilizing the field, the D needs to be updated to, re to have it go to the regional high school. I mean, to the regional school district, and then they should be paying for the repairs and things being done there and not the town. So that's kind of why when Mr. Um, when Mr. Gill brought up his um, warrant for the, the work to be done there, I voted no because the deed doesn't clearly state who owns it. So that's where I thought the revision is what you were talking about um, with your question. So I did ask town council because it says high school in Templeton, which would be Narragansett. Right. And he, he does agree to that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's the high school for the town. Um, so that's that's the interpretation. It's not, a town. Okay. It's not a town high school, it's a regional right. school district. It is, but it's also the high school for and then my next question is in regards to the user fees that they're collecting for these sports, for these teams that are playing on this field. I had Jeff, I had, you know, asked you the question also. Um, they're collecting user fees. 
Are those going into the high school user fee account? Or is that going into the town's recreational account? I would have to check on that. Okay, I'm not, I don't want to answer a question until I get the information. Well, I understand the question. My, my feeling is that when I talked about having a plan at town meeting, this is what I'm talking about. These issues should have been resolved way before we got to this point, way before Narragansett packed their butt up there. Because, and I know why it wasn't, because it's going to make waves. It's going to create a problem. Because if you read what this little old man had intended, this was going to be for the youth of Templeton, not Phillipston, not Hubbardston, not Royalston, not Barry, not East Overshoe. But because there was no plan, now we're up to our elbows and alligators, and the stuff's got to stop. It really has to stop. Whenever anybody comes for anything, you need a workable plan. There's a whole lot of difference between a, a workable plan and a plan. There's no way on this earth, in my way of looking at this, that any kid in Templeton should be stopped from using that field. Any family, any group, I know the recreation's having, getting teams together to play. There's no way anybody should tell him you can't play here because this is what the man said. Templeton High School was where they're gonna do the senior housing way back. Even before that might've been the, the smaller one even. They didn't have a field to play on. So this is what the man was leaving this land to. He had intent. His intent was for to make sure that the kids in the town had a place to play. You know, deals should not have been made with the school. I don't know if there's anything written. I don't know if anything is, is even set up as to who does what. I don't wanna find out that we can't really maintain it because we don't have the staff. So we have townspeople riding around the track though. This ain't your fault. This was, this was way before you took over the reins. This is one of those reins that's gonna hang us because it wasn't handled appropriately in the first place, mm -hmm. but better now than never. We just have people, teams, town teams that are being told that they cannot play up there. There's no way. Who's, who's telling them that? Um, in, in the past, it's been mentioned, it was actually mentioned that the right. town- There was an organization that, uh, of, of, and I and I did see that. Yeah, the Parks and Recreation is supposed to be, they, they should have a handle on that, right? They're right currently, right now, we have a, a new recreation committee. They're right. getting everything updated with their minutes and they have their issues that the challenges they're trying to overcome at this point. But I think the question is coming from here. So is was there a will left? Was there a will identified? This, 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 this is you're looking at it. This is it. Well, this is the D, right? That is it. Yep. That's what that's what was in the D. This that is was the will. It. Okay, that was that was because so, sometimes there's there's annexes that, that are attached that specifically say specific uses and stuff like that. No, and that's why I'm asking that the DD be rewritten. You can't who owns it. Who's responsible for it? So then that would be the question. Do do the who has legal authority to rewrite that document based on the the deeds office in Worcester? Mm -hmm. No one. Well, that's why I would have to go back to town council. Right. Really. I don't think anyone does. Well. I mean, if there's if there's verbiage that. that's in there that's based on like the school, the high school, which we don't have anymore because they, they merge as a right. regional school district. Um, yeah, and then obviously who take who has authority? If I give my land to you, mm -hmm. it would go to your family. Right. And trust. But, but she can't he can't come over me and say, Oh, it's it, it, he's gone, so I want it. Right, right. No, I totally agree. You know, totally you agree. can't um, yes, Mr. Spring, go ahead. <clears throat> I looked at this. And I'll look, I dug into it quite deeply. I did a, a bunch of research. And by the way, let me start off by saying, Adam, you did a good job responding. I don't think it's your total responsibility to 
you should have done this, number one. It falls more on the actual select board that they can end up trying to clarify this. You get, you, you work for them. And I, I, I understand that. What I'm gonna take and end up reading is the last part about the school and the high school. And it says, it says that it should be under the supervision of the playgrounds or recreation commission elected by the voters of the town. Well, we don't have a playgrounds or recreation commission voted by the town. We have a voted committee, but that's, and I, and I think Mr. Bennett is, is trying to, to, to work that out with the selectmen and obtaining that and, and creating one, but that's in the, in, in the future. At chapter 45, I looked at a lot of documentation on 45 and um, I was amazed at the type of things that I found. I didn't, I didn't find anything in the selectmen because the selectmen, it said, it actually in, in, in the uh, chapter 45, it said if you don't have a recreation, it falls on, it falls on the board of selectmen. We can't make up for the past per se that the selectmen weren't aware of this. It's, it's what we have to deal with, number one. But it's, it basically said that a, a number of sections, uh, I looked at section 2, 14, I'm just going to take and tell you that the sections and kind of sum up in 16. And one other one that I looked at of that, of that 45. And I was amazed at what I found uh, on the 45. It basically said it's the selectmen that, that, that do it. They uh, they act as, as the, the commissioners for it. They end up, if you don't have them, uh, they also have the ability to take it end up. Uh, 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 they acquired it by gift, which we saw the deed. That's a gift to the community. I don't know if you can change a deed uh, such as that needed by a man to the town. I, I don't know how legal that is. I'm not a lawyer, but I, I wouldn't think that you could change his deed per se. So we probably have to take and let it, let it stand there. Then I looked at uh, other stuff under, under the general law of Mass 45, and it, there was other provisions in there where it said that uh, you end up, uh, if you if you create monies or or there's uh, monies uh, from concessions or whatever, and we have a concession there, some of those proceeds are supposed to go to take and maintain it. Now, I, I one of my fellow committee members brought up the thing about there's been fees charged to outside people coming in that they can have tournaments. I have not seen the selectmen end up, and, and, and we're gonna go on to another one about the gazebo. The selectmen have to approve the use of town property. I haven't seen anything from selectmen in the past, and I, I tried to take and go back as far as I could, just take and see if I, I found anything. There, there might be, but I, I don't think so. Mm. Where they gave permission for outside agencies to use it the same as what they did with the uh, cultural council and, and other entities to use town property. And there's nothing about a, a fee schedule that they can use that. I know that, that we've had other entities end up using town property and I'm sure we have changed, we have charged them fees. There's no fee schedule for this thing, even for outside. The priority really is for the town, townspeople, but this, 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 that, that we got to clean up the process and have the use of that facility approved if it's outside of the town. And to me, even uh, getting approval for, from the selectmen for the district to use it under this under this uh, particular particular deed, because they're not the whole, they are not the high school. And I know what I know what your lawyer is going to say. He's going to agree with the select the majority of the selectmen. It's just it's just that way. He doesn't work for the people. Yes. All right. So, Mr. Lamontagne, I'm going to let you respond, and then Mr. Graves, I'm going to come to you next, please. 
if I can, there's a lot of uh, moving components and the select board, I mean, have oversight and we've been slowly trying to get this back and into um, going from the how the Parks Commission was never adopted. You will see that on the fall town meeting warrant where the select board have been working on getting that taken care of. Another thing that was an oversight was um, that the talk of donations and those donations have to be accepted by the select board as well. So there's a lot of moving components on this. This is an older deed. This is back before we had the regional school district. I think it would be a challenge to change it as you brought up, Mr. Spring. Um, but working close, closely and uh, and letting the folks know where we're going with it and how we're slowly addressing the components because town meeting from annual town meeting to fall town meeting and drafting the warrant and, and work with the select board to get everything done over overnight. Um, things take time in the government, and um, but the, it's something that we're aware of and we're working toward addressing. And it's going to—it's not going to happen overnight. It's, and it's a challenge because we have townspeople doing some some maintenance up there when we have a buildings and grounds which is responsible for buildings and grounds, and that's one of the things that they should be taking care of along with some of the other parks and who's taking care of it up there. The there's town that, is, but again, like you know, the school uses it, but the DPW maintains it, so we don't even know that the town owns it. Yeah. Well, Adam Giebank can say first. I'm just going to say that it's to the inhabitants of the town, and it's similar to like the common. Um, that's the town. Where, the town owns it. It's, it's worded this. It's town it, property. It's town property. We take care of it. The building and grounds department does a pretty good job considering they only have two full-time folks mm -hmm. and they they do their best to mow and everything. And I'll tell you, I have many conversations with Mr. Sozik to make sure we're staying on top of not only Town Hall, all the other buildings at Town Common, uh, Gilman Way, you got the cemeteries. For the fair amount of the uh, fact that you only have two folks and some seasonal folks, uh, I think they're doing a pretty good job. There's times where they get backed up. I get it. Mm -hmm. And but when they when they get going on it and they're on schedule, we're usually pretty good at taking care of things for the most part. Mr. Graves. Okay. So I almost actually sent some of these on this with regards to um part. Your questions went handful, but I only answered four in that email to you. Now I can't deliberate on what this is because I'm not in the town of Templeton's municipality and with the school district, but our history is a really good question to look at. So the question is, what is recognized as Templeton High School? This deed is from 1931. 1955 is the regional agreement. The original 1955 agreement does not mention the town of Templeton High School. In section two, it talks about that the school district shall be within the boundaries of the town of Templeton. In 1957, as passed by both Phillipston and Templeton, there is an amendment number four to the regional agreement. There is one sentence in that that discusses the town of Templeton High School, that during the time of the establishment of the property, the high school and its properties go to the district. And after what is now the middle school was established, which is the high school and middle school back then, all of those properties that are identified as Templeton High School go back to the town. One sentence in Amendment 4. 1977 Agreement Section 3 lists the town of Templeton High School nowhere in it, and it identifies the town of Phillips and boundaries are also allowed to the district. So that is all I'm going to say on that. 1931, this is the D. 1955 is the regional agreement. 1957 is the fourth. Amendment on that in 1977 is no mention. So, unless there is another lease or deed, I don't see where else it's mentioned anywhere. That's just the agreement of uh, the school agreement with the town. That does have nothing to do with the deed per se. Just the language. All of the properties that are identified as Templeton High School go to the district, district. until such time as. The property is completed as such, and none of the other properties were ours until the 1977 agreement. 
can it be re-identified with Walkerville, Otter River, et cetera, and Phillipston Memorial. So the district being Phillipston. Well, and Templeton. Templeton. Yeah. So How does that relate to the town itself of, of Templeton? I understand the district, but that's... The deed states the town of the high school of Templeton. Yes, I, I, I understand so that. He just gave you the history. Mm -hmm. and okay. how it's being looked at. Mm -hmm. Good job. But also the problem is that it says that it shall be used as a playing field by the youth of the town. Mm -hmm. So here we have, now years ago, my, my ex-husband and a whole bunch of guys from town played ball at Gilman Way all the time. Narragansett, I went to Nara Grant I graduated in 64. Never ever did the high school use that field. Okay. So I now we have youth in town wanting to go there and being told they can't. That there's something very wrong. That's, and com this, that's, that's completely contrary yeah. to what's written in this deed. Yeah. Is that I like to find what that is. Yeah. Because it's saying it's that's saying it. that I don't think yeah. based on the way the deed's written, I don't think that, that we can deny. I mean, there's a ninety thousand yeah. dollar playground equipment. Yeah. 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 So you can't. Can I take my kids to play on? I mean, so do I. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> so I mean, if you're I mean, going to go up there, your your family's going to get together and they're having a softball game, and all of a sudden they're told, "Now you can't come here. No. You no. Get lost." No. And then yes. we pay for it and we pay to have kids bust up there because we were so intelligent that we built a school with no play yard. So there's a whole lot wrong with this whole picture and it's got to get resolved and ignoring it isn't going to do it. Yeah, we get to have their field days up there. Yeah, so what, uh, what I could do is I could not. Okay. Never did that. Hang on, guys. Let's, let's, let me, let's let Mr. Lamontagne speak, please. So on the issues that happened in the past, um, I can't go back and change that. No, no. Um, but what I can do is have a conversation with our community services director, Jackie Prime, and um, have her relay to the recreation commission or committee, excuse me, uh, that that be taken into consideration when they're doing their operational aspects. Mm -hmm. Who, can I ask a question? Who does the scheduling up there for different entities that they can end up being up there? That seems to be a problem. It's an ongoing issue that we're working on. It can't yeah, be the school telling everybody else what to do. Did because you, this other entity that, that could did not could not use it, mm -hmm. we told that they couldn't use it. Uh there was a town, basically a, a town league, a little basically a league. I can say from what I can gather, the issue was you had a committee and one person kind of having being delegated too much authority. Mm -hmm. That's nicely put. And somebody's got to somebody's got to be accountable for the money too. If there's money changing hands, so I think there needs to be more structure in the whole thing. And I, it's I just that. been too loose, and you know it's it's kind of hard to deal with. But yeah. you have to do it; otherwise, it's just gonna get out of hand. And, and I can because tell it's you been stated at, at, at the recreation committee in the past by Taft Chairman that money was collected. I think we. So, I think we need to let Mr. Lamontagne yeah. do his work. Yeah, and I'm working operationally on it. I could I could tell you I already spoke with Jackie uh, Prime and she's working on the whole Unipay and all yeah. the other issues, but they're they're getting it together. Not bad for a librarian. Maybe we ought to give her another title. Um, <laughs> April does I call her community. April, are you around. good with allowing Mr. Lamontagne to do his work and I am good, but I would like to see this placed on a follow-up agenda. Yeah. Um, Can we give him can we give him a couple of months to yeah, absolutely? I, right. I mean, let's bring this just because things just keep coming up in regards to this field. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I'd like to keep in touch with you. Let's, um, let's place this on, let's place this into old business to come back second meeting of October. Okay. But I also want to make it clear like maintenance aspect. Yeah. Think of it like this it's probably the easiest way to understand it. You have the recreation and they do the operational aspect, mm -hmm. and then you have the select board where. As Mr. Spring pointed out, with the with that out having this this recreation uh, commission elected, they take care of the maintenance ahead, or the, the property itself. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to look at it like that. It's probably the easiest way to understand it because of 
but we're working on the logistics when it comes to having a Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, yeah. I was very proud of them for getting together a bunch of people to play ball and doing a structure, which I think is wonderful. I think that's good. I, I think the Recreation Committee, the Commission Committee basically has pulled in some stuff to pick and end up getting the youth of the committee uh, to use that facility and other facilities. Yeah. All right, so Mr. Lamontagne, um, we're going to bring this back in a couple months to see where progress is on this one, if that's all right. That's fine. Okay. Um, question, question two from April. Um, capital funds, how they're requested and by whom? Go ahead. Okay, so every year uh, we have our department heads come together, get their list together on what, they're, what they need for their capital, um, and they put together a list, prioritize it, and they send it to the uh, Capital Improvements Committee. Um, and the Capital Improvements Committee go, they get presented with all the department heads come in and they present what, they're, what they want, what they, their needs are, I should say. Um, I'm supposed to meet with them um, and go over the bylaw um, and understanding the fact that the $10,000 threshold when it comes to capital items coming going forward and for the whole bylaw itself. So once that gets done, the Capital Improvements Committee, I will talk, end up talking with whoever the chair is and, and come up with when I go through all the numbers and how much goes to by our financial management policy into our stabilization, all these other accounts. I try to figure out a number that will be our capital number uh, that they work with and try to, so they then figure out, okay, this department needs this, that department needs that. That's number one. We want to add that as a committee. They deliberate, and at the end, they come up with this capital budget that their recommendation, regardless of funding source, uh, that they submit to the select board, and then the select board accepts that report, and then at that point, we'll move forward and put it onto the warrant. Mm -hmm. I'll put on the draft warrant, and then the, the select board take it from there. That's probably the easiest way to sum it up. Without getting into all those. Are they going to try and finally pull in where there's some entities that have high capital, high capital projects? They're not using from the general fund, but they're using from other funds. They should also be listed per se. And I'll give an example of that. The, the uh, heating system at the school that was over $3 million. And that was never, as far as I know, was never on the capital thing. Yes, I understood that the school ended up taking and paying for that as part of their budget. But it, it, it should show that we've, we've got that and how we're paying for it. So people know everything that we're being spent for capital. And the, my last question here is, we have not done a good job of even knowing what our assets in this community. Are. I was gonna say that. Time and time again, it's been brought up about assets. What assets do we own? There's a software folks for the selectmen that are sitting here. There's a software for actually pulling in the assets and putting in this program, numbered, et cetera, when they first come on and what you have. And when something comes off, it's gonna be told by whatever department that's going off. Simple process. I ended up having a lot of equipment for the company I had and a lot of assets. The town needs to take and end up doing that. They need to grab a hold of assets. We've had in the past things that we have, vehicles as an example, that we still said we had, but were, were scrapped and sold. Actually, that makes more sense to do that even before you try to do a capital plan, at least know what you have. Yes, that's a starting We talked point. about that in 2000, when, did, when was Rita here? 2014, 13, 12? Uh, yep, go ahead. Um, where can we find a list of things that have been submitted for capital improvement? For instance, I was curious as to, everybody knows that the senior center needs a roof. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't that on a warrant article during the last meeting? Um, was that something that was even submitted or has it something that's been approved already or is just sitting in the account? Um, and then my follow-up question is who manages you know, the projects 
um, and the distribution of those funds. So for your first uh, part of your question, it was in regards to the the senior center. The senior center was, that, that was uh, submitted. It didn't get recommended. Uh, the select board, I had talked with them, and it could be because it was already presented to Capitol, it could go forward to the fall town meeting if they choose to proceed forward in that direction to address the. I have been in talks with the architects who indicated the issues with that roof. So we, we, we understand that that's a concern and that's something that needs to be addressed because that roof were to cause it could cause other extenuating or worsen the. The, the, the building itself, because that's kind of like the cover for everything inside there. The so the bones of the building. So we, we've certainly done uh, a lot. Of, we spent a lot of money in that project. It's unfortunate that the, the roof was um, not quite uh, ideal. I could tell you I had a conversation with Mr. Sozik, and he certainly uh, doesn't want to go up on that roof. Mm -hmm. uh, he tries to limit that. Mm -hmm. Um, for the project, the coordination, uh, because I'm the chief procurement officer, I will work with the department heads to make sure that they're purchasing everything properly according to Mass General Law. Um, going into the capital assets, where the select board just passed the other night, um, an amendment, and I know when you were on, we did the financial management policies. Another amendment to the financial management policies for disposition of surplus items, um, because we didn't have the statute calls that we have procedures. So what we did is we adopted the, 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 the disposition of surplus items with the, the thresholds for 10,000 or over items, items 1,000 and over items of no resale or uh, salvage value. So there's a process now in place clearly defined. Now the board had past practice of what they did, but we never had it written down formally. So now at least we have it clear that if something were not to go through that process, that we would consider that theft. Mm -hmm. So those are I those are policies that we're putting in now to capital asset inventory and control. I think we're getting there, but we also have to fine line our policies so that the department heads are understand this is what we follow, this is what we do, and this is how we are going to administer moving forward. Um, because we have procurement and we have uh, all these statutes that we have to follow when it comes to purchasing. So in regards to your capital question, uh, I oversee it, um, but I do at times if it's state bid, it's something that the department head can handle, I will have them proceed forward. Aren't there funds sitting there to fix up that all or is that done or where? We are in the process right now. That project has, is now under the control of the select board. We have handled some matters there. We have the architect drawing up the specifications for that project. Uh, I feel we won't have sufficient funds to fully complete it how it should be done, um, but I think we could get it operational or close to. But to answer a question, you, there is CPC funds available. CP, the, that's CPC funds outside of the, okay. it's listed in the budget versus actual under CPC with River's Edge Conservation Area and other projects we're working on. Okay, so take an answer to two questions. And prior uh, capital committees, which I was on at the time, the, the chairman ended up having a list of uh, every all the uh, uh, most of the stuff that was that came before, and showed <coughs> and showed when some of would would be taken care of, and it was on the town website. Since that time, that that individual has as no longer. Because uh, he was he was a selectman, what he no longer is a selectman, no longer with the town. That seems to have fallen by the wayside. The the committees after that did not pick up, or there wasn't a good transition from from one committee to the next as to the listing of stuff. Because I see, and, and, and everybody sees it, is that there's some stuff that came last year that are on on on, on the list this year. For whatever reason, so I mean that that's something that really has to take place. And the the, the capital issue is the as far as a, all of the, the capital has to take an individual address. There was a there was a an Excel sheet that showed all of it mm -hmm. and who and and, and it, it actually highlighted those items 
uh, that were going to be, be presented to the town on the town warrant and who was going to pay for them. In some instances, it was monies from this organization or that or whatever, or and for the town. So it actually broke it out as to who was paying for that particular thing. And that was actually up on the town website on the, on the Capitol for uh, at least one or two years. I think I, I still could end up getting that. I had a, had a copy of that because I was on the committee at that, at that particular time. Yeah. I think that was a good copy. Yeah, well, it, it's, it, was, it was there. It was tracked. All capital. And, and people don't, the people need to understand that capital is everything. That telephone, these desks, yeah. computers, chairs, that's all capital assets. No, it's so, not. Oh, it, it's $10, tangible, it's tangible and untangible. So, I mean, it's all it got to be accounted for because it's all paid by taxation dollars. Um, but again, zero, thousand, ten thousand. Yeah. No, I got it. But we can manage our debt better if we have a capital, a real plan. Because yep. one year we did the water tower, we did a pumping station, yep. we did all kinds of stuff, and it was never on a capital plan. Mm -hmm. And that is not a way to run a town. That's right. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. So okay. if I can, um, we were working with that Excel sheet. Um, yeah. It wasn't the most ideal tool, mm -hmm. um, but since our financial management review, when the state came in, Division of Local Services, we have since, um, and I've already given the tool to uh, one of the select board members, well, Tim has it being on the, the capital planning committee. So that's gonna be something where this will, what we have now is a much better way of tracking so when the committee has this new tool, you'll find it to be something that we could put up on the web page. And it's a lot, I think, where the Excel sheet was just, you had all those years. And if you didn't update that, it, it could mess up all the formulas. It was kind of getting, getting to be a nightmare in the sense, um, you probably remember uh, when you were on the board, that it, it, it really needs to get cleaned up like what we did with our debt schedule. Um, and that's something I want to see. That was high tech all back when computers first came out. Well, the Excel thing, it, yeah. yeah, but over time, it just, yeah. it, it got too messy and it really needs to get cleaned up. So it's yeah. good that the state gave us a new tool to use. So I did the roof. That's in another discussion as to how that happened. And, and it, 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 it did go out too big, but the individual chose. But you remember how long those fiscal yes, years rolled that out. That individual and, chose to do that. It was too much. And some of the members said that that, that, that but not too many years. April, does that? Um... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Mm -hmm. Question three, can we get clarification from the TA on, TA on who owns the gazebo on the common? There appears to be some confusion in regards to the use and who approves it. Go ahead. Can I just make a comment? In yeah, to this go first? ahead. That question came into play because I was watching um, the council meeting about the concert coming up. Yes. And um, they were discussing, they were questioning, who did they get permission mm -hmm. from to use the gazebo? And um, it's floored. Exactly. I'm going to keep it very uh, simple. My interpretation is that the gazebo is on town property. Mm -hmm. And it falls under our authority, the select board, mm -hmm. when it comes to our town property use application that we have in place. Now, the Lions, the Lions Club simply maintains it. Um, I've attached the uh, yeah. Exhibit B, the exhibit town B, property use application. Town property use application. Yep. And the way I interpret it is just like that. I mean, I did some research. Uh, the construction of the gazebo was in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Um, quite frankly, it's something I inherited coming here. So um, <laughs> <Lucky man. laughs> it's uh, it looks nice when you drive by, but it's certainly something where I, the select board signs off on that application use form. I consider it, we have first right of refusal or right of, uh, excuse me, first dibs when it comes to that. Which makes sense because it's on town common property as the scene. Go ahead, Will. My question is this. I, I look back and I, I didn't see it. Is if that was gifted to the town. There's no, from, from what I could tell, I didn't see anything gifted from the Lions to, to us. And the provision about maintaining it. There should be something in place from the Lions Club donating it and 
uh, some commitment to maintaining it. It's, yes, I understand it's on town property, but there's also some benches over there that haven't been kept up besides. So, I mean, we need to take it into cleaning that up. Yes, it's on town property. Let's clear it up as we, it was gifted to us. It's on town property. And something that actually says, I as a lion or lion's club, they're going to maintain it. Because if we don't have that, you know who it's going to fall on? It's going to fall on the taxpayers. And my number one is looking out for the taxpayers. If we if we can't if we can't end up saying that, then we need to take and put some type of provision on the buildings and grounds to, to maintain that. And that's that just brings up more issues per se. So we need to just clarify that so that we we can end up you know moving on and, and clarifying that and get it squared so away. What about all the electrical under there? God only knows if mice crawl under there and chew up holes mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna have somebody that's gonna at least maintain it or keep an eye on it, and I don't ever see anybody there. Do they have a priority over anybody else using it? As far as I know, maybe that needs to be clarified too. <laughs> as far as I know, I mean, if somebody comes in with a town use application, I never heard of anybody being thrown out of there. Oh, I understand that, but does the Lions Club got to get priority? I mean, I use and, and don't don't get me wrong, they use it at Halloween and that's a great use mm -hmm. but what happens if there's some other thing entity that they're doing do they get priority over townspeople since it's on town property I mean I want to give that a Halloween thing to them they, they, they do it they've always done a, a good job it's just no plan when see that's people do things but groups change like there used to be a number of groups that did things and then People get old, they die, they move away, they get mm -hmm. to do it anymore, yeah. and the younger people don't want to bother. As far as life I know, happens. As far as I know, it, it could have been a handshake. I don't know. It's yeah, always been probably. like this, un, this uh, understanding, but I think the cleanest way to address it would be some kind of uh, agreement. Yeah, yeah, SLA. Or agreement or yeah, something yeah. understanding and writing. Okay. Well, being uh, being a lion, I can tell you that uh, there is no first choice. Yeah. If the town has utilization, they have utilization. The Lions Club does maintain it. We paint it. We provide the flags every single year. Uh, the um, but I will talk to uh, yeah, just get the committee and put the lines. But there should be something in writing that you're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna do that. One hundred percent right. Yeah. There's gotta be a policy in place for utilization because again, the way it was in the past. Again, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the past. But I mean, <laughs> we would. Ask if someone wanted to use the gazebo or say, okay, well, it's being maintained by the Lions Club. You can contact the Lions Club for maybe a donation because they they maintain it. Uh, I know my son got married up there, and uh, I did contact the Lions because we did use the gazebo, and I do give them a donation because they do maintain it, and it goes back into the Lions for paint and stuff like that. So there's got to be some type of policy in place for utilization. You absolutely want to just clarification on this right. whole mess. Yep. Well, yeah, because something gets hurt up there, it's town responsibility. That's town exactly. insurance. So uh, that's why we do the the request now and they have to show proof of insurance so um 25 yeah. years from now the lions club may not be around you don't know yeah, yeah. right so we're just talking about but i'll find out and i'll i'll send you a message right. and i'll cc them. yeah and, and, the, and the, if i could also add uh, okay. this uh, conversation came up too the select board brought it up when we were talking when we got received our ada report because obviously it's there's, not handicapped yep. there's some other issues there with yeah. that so i mean if we could get something where I, I'll be more yeah. than happy to sit down for the lines, but okay. that needs to be made accessible. That's something we need to talk about. Absolutely. Thank you, John. No, no worries. Thank Just you. Just to clean up, no worries. That one to clean up. Yeah, add to it. Is that, April, is that? <laughs> that's especially that okay. to buy him a broom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Question four. Um, the school system is about to receive a large amount of cash from the state. Um, they should be advised to put this aside to offset the loss of one-time extra funds used in the current fiscal year. Mr. Lamonte, I'm going to let you respond first. And then Mr. Graves is going to go after that because he put out a very good response to this as well. And I want to make sure that they're both heard. Mr. Lamonte first. Well, I mean, I'm just going to keep it as uh, simple as I can. Um, my advice to this, because I mean, I with the budget for Monty Tech and NRSD, I 
can't real I don't have budget authority over right. what they do. No right. um, they just give you a bill. Right. <laughs> I yeah, mean, when it comes to the assessment, yeah. we have our discussion, yeah. all of us, but for the most part, um, yeah, I would hope it'd be on a temporary yeah. basis so we could sustain the cost in the out years. Mm -hmm. Um there was a lengthy discussion that we all remember, even at the select board meeting on the SR2 funds that were applied to our minimum local contribution. Mm -hmm. We have a plan where, I mean, obviously, because you have your structural where the cost, your MLC goes up. So if we're level funding, we could reach it. But um, I will say we're, we're doing what we can on our town end mm -hmm. to absorb the difference. Mm -hmm. um, but I will let, leave the question of the NRFC mm -hmm. to uh, our NRFC school committee member. Mr. Gray, here, or oh, here, over here. Here. Oh, okay. here, why don't you sit next? Okay. A, Mr. Graves, have a seat and please. So, since this is not a regular meeting of the school committee, I really can't deliberate mm -hmm. on everything. But what I can give you is a play-by-play -play on what happened last week and give some hopefully important information. Yep. So, last week at the July twenty-first regular business meeting, the School committee did vote to go forward with a proposed plan for the budgeted ARPESA funds. Something else that happened that I know some people are finally getting aware of is that there was an additional amount from the American Rescue Plan in the order of $611 million that we'll, we'll have to address at some point. Um, that was granted by the federal government to the state of Massachusetts. So I don't know. Before everyone gets happy, we're not getting all of that. Oh, well, we well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. get that. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, the school's school getting their portion of it. Yeah, the school's getting, yeah. So we got awarded, at least for the art professor funds, I don't know if there'll be an additional grant that will, if there'll be anything else additionally down the line, but our amount was in the order of one million two hundred and seventy two hundred and sixty three thousand three hundred and seventy three dollars And part of what needs to be understood here is that as far as I've read in all of the information from the Department of Education, both federally and state, there has been no guidance, unlike with ESSER 2 that says that we can spend it for what the state sets as the minimum local contribution. And the important part here is that the state sets the minimum local contribution. The district does the assessment. The assessment is usually higher than minimum local contribution depending on you know individual aspects of that how you line that up with the chapter 70 funds and that that's a whole other level of discussion but the interesting thing about the ESSER free funds is in the requirements and why you are probably questioning why are we spending almost half of it in each fiscal year fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23 is because part of the U.S. Department's requirements and part of the requirements that the state has to follow the same requirements are that we have to use a certain percentage to address learning loss and evidence-based interventions and summer enrichment, et cetera. And we have to do what's called maintenance of effort and maintenance of equity. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on what that means, but essentially what we're discussing is what happened with the ESSER 1 and 2 funds that allowed certain services in the district, such as the ability to go back to in-person learning with the COVID restrictions, we have to maintain that. So all of those positions that got saved due to ESSER must stay as they are because of ESSER. Our equity or our resource, resources per student went up they have to stay there unless we have justification to go down. Mm -hmm. Part of the other parts of this is that we also have to follow a safe plan to make sure that these students are able to go to full in-person learning as that is what John Riley, the commissioner has said he wants for the right. entire state of Massachusetts. Now, um, I don't know what that will mean because it's the policy of the school committee under, and I wanna say it's policy BDAF, uh, I might be getting that wrong, but it's under subsection B of our policy manual that in an emergency policy vote last year that we have to follow CDC guidelines and only CDC guidelines or whatever else the state should decide. So that will probably come up at the August 18th meeting, but as very clearly see on the ESSER free count, there is no money wasted. Um, yeah. There's no money saved yeah. from that award. 
The interesting thing is that there is actually one position that will be lost going into FY23, and that will be one social emotional learning specialist that knows at the end of FY22 that they will be, um, that their contract ends, so they know that. Oh, okay. Any questions? I'll let you go first in case you're, because you're the one who posed it. I, li I like the way that you broke this down. I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I guess it's what happens after 2023. We discussed that. Oh, we did actually bring that up. Smart. <laughs> well, Margaret Hughes actually brought it up, our chairwoman, and she, and it was a back and forth between her and the superintendent with what do we do after all of this is gone? And the question will be, we'd have to propose that it obviously would have to go on the budget and we would debate it in finance committee and either we would bring it as is to town floor as the final assessment for the towns of Templeton and Phillipston, or we would eliminate those positions. And that will be a discussion in FY23. And as Margaret described, it is kicking the can down the road. Yeah. Historically, the school has sucked up more than their fair share of the money that we can raise. And they, I don't want to have to wear a hard hat to town meeting, you know? Um, there are a lot of people that have been affected by this whole COVID thing. Mm. It didn't just hit the school. And there are parents that couldn't go to work. Mm -hmm. There are jobs that are gone. And it makes it really, really difficult for those people. And then you, you know, you sit there and you have your own little world, but you have to look around you. How many people didn't pay their taxes? The lady mentioned it, mentioned it last night. There are people that haven't paid their, their taxes. It isn't because they didn't want to pay their taxes. Yeah, they, they don't have the money. So there has to be a, a reality base there. And you know, because can I, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. So the SR one, two, and three funds, they're also in the budget for so the town's contribution is less because of those funds. Is that correct? That's how I read that. <laughs> No, 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 the, no, 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 no. the minimum local contribution, just like the award amounts are mm -hmm. set by the state, we have no choice mm -hmm. in this. And it's right. based a lot on our October enrollment numbers, the October 1st enrollment numbers. I'll be perfectly honest with you, the only way that your MLC goes down is if you have less students in the building. Right. Now, obviously, we're at the top end, too, of that high end, correct, still? I don't know that, but I know that regional school districts typically are on the higher end for what are required on minimum local contributions. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I can, um, sure. Thanks for all your Thank you, Justice. That was, a, information. that was a very good. That was a very thorough explanation. Yeah, Thank you. The long-term problem about this is that the school budget never goes down. Right. Mm -hmm. We all know that. Yeah. And they it takes a big chunk of the money from, from and. Uh, actually puts a strain on the general fund for other uses. Mm -hmm. And they've got the school and us have to take an end up living together here. And the fact that if they ask for too much money, the town's going to end up having to cut services. And some of those services are needed by those people that are in the school as, as, as students because their families are, 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 are in the community. That's a that's a hard press problem that we're going to end up seeing in the future here. That's my concern. Mm -hmm. As come 2024, yep. they're going to be mm -hmm. looking for an override again. Yep. And if we don't give them the override, these two individuals here who've been hired with these funds are going to be losing their jobs. The taxpayers are going to be hit against the school people. And it's just going to be another disaster. Yep. I think it's time for the school to level down. I will actually put one question that I'm going to definitely say at the August 18th meeting, but I think the entire, I, I think Templeton and the school district need to think about this is these funds are wonderful. 
you know, you get all this money, you know, whenever the town got awarded 2.4 million. Mm -hmm. But the question really boils down to, depending on the project and what you're spending it on, is it merciful to use the funds like that? Or is it cruel? That really, that's really where, where it boils down to. Is it merciful? It's like giving Are, somebody a big ice cream cone and then taking it away. <laughs> well, you know, what it causes an uproar in the community you know, between the taxpayers and the school. I, as a taxpayer, I obviously want to support the school, mm -hmm. but not when they're, I hate to say it, spending money that they don't have. Well, and, and the other issue, if I may, is that the funding formula, that what this has demonstrated, and I think every single community will in even the normal public schools who are just one city or one town will attest to this is that the funding formula that the state has provided is we it's not going to catch up to this very well at all this is just and you have to understand that the SO3 funds the way that we have to spend them a lot of it had to do with the fact that we had to spend SO1 and 2 to raise up those services and now we're stuck there mm -hmm. yep. And in order to get awarded for this, we, we have to maintain those equitable services in that maintenance. So it's it's an interesting. We, I am certain that this will be debated more because this year the um, school committee has decided to do finance committee as a committee of the whole. Mm -hmm. So that will probably be discussed um, at length. There's, there's no way that S or three or any other awards that get granted aren't going to be discussed with the finance for the end of this year. Uh, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to recognize Mr. Tope. Mr. Chair, if I may briefly, for those that were at town meeting, and we remember we had a discussion on ESSER 1, yep. ESSER 2, and what was coming down the pipe. Yep. ESSER 1 and ESSER 2 were part of the CARES Act. Mm -hmm. We had very specific guidance before it could be spent, the town said it was agreed to. It. That was an agreement by both Templeton and, and Phillipson. And then those monies got put in. Mm -hmm. The piece that was omitted as the school budget was presented was that built a structural deficit right from day one. Everything we added became a negative number for the next fiscal year. Right. The MLC is what the state says we can afford to pay. It is not necessarily what we can afford to pay That's cool. when they come up with the assessment. Hence, our difference in the assessment from the MLC. Exactly my point. ARPA and ESSER 3 are a different set of rules. They're being tracked differently by the U.S. Department of the Treasury. Mm -hmm. I've yet to see guidelines that tell us what to do. ESSER 1 and 2 is very specific. Very yeah. We're throwing money to the state. Push it down to your schools. If you don't use it, it goes back to the state and it goes back to the feds. Mm -hmm. We don't see that yet because the ESSER, I'm sorry, the American Rescue Plan Act guidance is 187 pages issued by the United States Department of Treasury. And people much smarter than myself are still trying to wrap their right. minds around it. There are so many moving pieces to this puzzle that it's really hard to pin down where we're going. But there was no requirement for the school district to approach us prior to accepting as their three funds. That just adds to the confusion of the puzzle. They Jeffrey, could just say Jeffrey said no. He was right. Don't do it because it was going to create a big horror show for us. The, the, the thing, thing that I see is that even in the past, before these funds came from a little bit, other communities did a better job for their school committees. Of managing the budget and they they didn't end up doing the amount of increases that we have seen in the community because that hurts that hurts us that hurts us all if if, you, if that budget goes up too much and somehow they're managing their particular budget for the school much better than our own community we can argue about that forever but i've seen some some of the other communities they they have not gone up as much as, as us and they are under the same restrictions as us. It's just, it's, 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 I don't know, I don't know what they're doing so well, but we should find out and try to take a model that. I'd like to question. recognize, Ms. recognize the select board member, Ms. Griffiths, who snuck in the door somewhere along the line there after I had announced everybody and now, now I feel bad. Barry, go ahead. Rookie question. Yeah. And it didn't go across last night at the meeting. ARPA funds, Kim gave us a page of what they could be used for. And yeah. my question is, 
So SO2 is that we, we made a gap for ourselves and we're up here now. Can any of the ARPA funds fill in that gap? I don't know. I, from what I've read, right now. now there's not a lot of guidance on it. Know. He did put out a paper with a, a few re, uh, requirements, but the, 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 what I took from last night's meeting was that they put it. Yeah, so I, Adam, if, go I could, ahead. if I could jump in here. So Gary's right, and in the sense of when we voted to accept the money, what we did is push the issue down further. So when we came in with our plan on level funding, it's going to balance the budget out on the town end. Now, the question is the assessment on the school end, and I can't answer that question now. Um, but we're making it work on our side of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can say I, I'll work with Chris like I did last fiscal year 22 to make the budgets balance um, and see where it goes. But all I could do is talk about our side of the house and we're doing what we but need that's to do. going to be one year. We have multiple years here. Correct. That it's going to. And it's going to be really watching. And it. wasn't the reason being for kicking the can down the road to buy people time to right. lose their jobs well, and to make alternate plans and to prepare for that? I wouldn't say. Not, you know what I, I, I wouldn't want to say people Nathan, losing their jobs, but, <laughs> but I want to say uh, preparing their budgets the level there's, there's, there's also a, there's also a bigger elephant that none of us will want to talk about is that we've seen it in the past in North Worcester County the, the value of the houses at some point and oh, to say wow. this are going to go down and that's going to take and do what folks it's going to raise the tax rate and you you probably won't see the growth in this community happening and it, all around, it's going to put up more pressure on the town and the school to take and try to get by, especially when the when the tax rate goes up. Uh, there was an estimate that if that happens and the values go down, and, and this is something I think I think Mr. May ended up doing some some of this research, is that it was talked about, and this this was. Mr. Kaplan has talked about this a number of years ago about a twenty-two dollar uh, tax rate. If that happens, you're going to see a twenty-two, twenty to twenty-four dollar tax rate, uh, and I don't think a lot of people are going to be happy about that. The, you, you, the amount of taxes you're going to pay based on valuation is is going to be about the same, but you're going to take it end up. You might end up pricing out some of the people, the older people in this community in the future. That's that's what I see. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned with the vicious circle. I feel bad for the teachers who are going to be losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. And then I don't want to be put in a position where we have to choose between our public essential personnel yeah. and the teachers. I mean, that was a horrible position to be put in year after year after year. Yeah. I and I just I don't think it's fair. And we need to we have been broke we need to every, end the cycle. We need to break the cycle. Jeffrey and I figured it out. Every five years we have ended up in financial problems. And it's because we don't plan well enough and we have to do that. Last comment, Mr. Toe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a general comment. We don't control the school budget. Mm -mm. They control their money. Right. We are their customer. They provide a service. Yep. We can argue this till the cows come home. Yep. Exactly. It actually has to be addressed by the school committee. Yep. And town meeting. I don't want to open up a whole new can of worms, but I'm, I'm like enthralled with the master plan that the planning board put together. And I was trying to get a, an answer. On page 26, we We've allowed this building, but our sewage and water don't have the capacity. You know, the forecasting that we're talking I about. I thought that was great. So what do we do? I thought we that was We freaking need to, we, for, we don't forecast, then we put in a new sewer system and, and then the price of the housing goes down. And what do we do it for? I, I thought that was great. Terry, you're the only one that has had the backbone to even bring that subject up. Yep. And I have to give you credit. One. That's I all right, because that. it is another one of those things that people don't look at, and it should be right in front of us. Mm -hmm. It should. When you brought that up last night, I was like, you go, girl. 
Yeah. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because those are real, we don't have okay. a real strong water system. I'm, I'm done. Okay. You're good, good, with good with the answer. Yes. Good with the answer. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Lamontane. We appreciate your we appreciate your input. Very All right. The first one that looked at the plan at the master plan. Let's move to discussion. Are there any public comments at this time? Mr. Yeah, Mr. Bennett. I have uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Come say hello. We don't bite. There you go. <laughs> uh, I have just a few things. <clears throat> One is I was looking at, and I mentioned this at last night's meeting, uh, the board of selectmen, but, uh, and I am speaking as a resident. Uh, membership update on the town's website. I looked at the members, yeah. and you're not the only one, but uh, it's not current. Yeah, we need to, that needs to be updated. And uh, they're just to me, and that's a that's a big deal personally mm -hmm. for me because there's a town meeting vote, mm -hmm. there's bylaw. We'll have a town website. The town will provide a sum of money for the maintenance upkeep of that town website, and that's where we have planned. Well, not planned, but that's where we have been stuffing stuff, pumping out information mm -hmm. to the public. You want to find something, go here. Yeah. Well, it's like a policy. We can build bookshelves from floor to ceiling <laughs> and fill them with binders. If you don't open them up and mm -hmm. follow the policy, right. they ain't worth how to take them to help. Let me reach out to Holly uh, Young to get the uh, membership up there. The time uh, there so. Another thing that was uh, brought up, and this was by Mr. Graves last night as a, as a public comment, the MMA, and I get the emails, and I'm, I'm hoping other people sign up and, and get these as well. Yep. Uh, they, they put out a booklet of uh, government officials mm -hmm. of the towns, you know, new selectmen, new advisory. Sometimes, you, Jay, you might get, I remember mail was coming. I was the chairman for like two years, and it's still listed Mr. Will Spring as the right. chairman, even though I sent an email to them, you know, notifying the change. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing where he was talking about, Ms. Graves was talking about people get on committees and stuff and they really don't seem to have a handle on, you know, what the bylaw states, what their tasks are and this and that. Yeah. Um, and that would, to me, that if trying to let them know so they could update those books mm -hmm. and then they could send things out, like uh, get the last time they did it for one year, they sent out on a thumb drive, the selectman's handbook to all, all selectmen. Mm -hmm. They used to just time before that, before they updated, they used to just send them to newly elected selectmen. And when they redid the handbook, they sent a thumb drive Everybody. to the town office, and here's all all new selectmen mm -hmm. for the handbook. Which uh, again, we pay membership, taxpayers supply the money to belong to MMA and mm -hmm. the Association Town Finance Committee. They put out a handbook, and I hope. Uh, you all get it. You have it's open access to the MMA website now, mm -hmm. so you can find the book. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of towns that have a direct link that, that brings up the book. It's uh, 2017. Which and in the back of it, there's you know there's checklist all already done. There's procedures how to do this, what to check, blah blah blah. It just to me that'd be a good guideline for new members. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Will used to. All past documents and stuff with new members, he used to email it out. But mm -hmm. find out the procedures mm -hmm. and your responsibilities and what your role is and what laws apply to give you the authority to, you know, what you do right. is in that. And I just think, as his Mr. Graves' suggestion about having continuity with all the town boards and committees, because I'm amazed I've watched a few and it, it's like they don't even seem to understand how to keep minutes <laughs> and it, to me that's a yeah a personal big deal yeah. my my last update thing would be and you talked about this earlier and you didn't get it until late was um the expenditure report mm. and as mentioned last night by the accountant she talked about 
people have concerns over the insurance and benefits fund and there's you know hundred thousand dollars and what's the reasoning for that so being myself uh and being a pack rat <laughs> i went back and i looked at fiscal 17 and this is when it was listed on the expenditure report broken out individually with the county retirement at the end of the year there was zero left the town appropriated money they paid it for the unemployment compensation, there was 1878.34 left. For the group insurance, six cents. Medicare, there was 199.38. For the general insurance, the insurance deductible, there was zero left. So there was about two thousand dollars left in that fund. You go to <laughs> fiscal 18, insurance and benefits. 320,948.70 left. That's a lot of cake sitting there doing nothing. Uh, yeah. Uh, 2019, fiscal year 19, 238,867, 36. Better, but still a lot of money. Better. Fiscal 20, there was 141,304.82, but there has there was about 60,000. I didn't break out the exact change, I think, yeah. but there was about 60 that I right off the top of my head yeah. that I saw at a meeting. So there was a little over 200,000 that would have been left if they wouldn't have transferred money yeah. out of there. Right. And the report that you got today is 118,236.13. So it has been getting better, it's getting better, but uh, and the leftover amount in. What's in uh, ambulance receipts uh, is up a little bit as far as what's after the, the transfer of 270. Mm -hmm. But the thing with that is the first year they transferred money out of that fund to support the general fund, it was 225. Mm -hmm. Then it was 250. Then there was a special town meeting in July to take another 25,000 out of there. And then so it went to 250. Then it went to 270 because there was a need for an extra 20,000 and it's been at 270 and that's another thing I won't even get into. Uh, but I was just a uh, couple things that I thought the, the committee should know about membership and updating. Mm -hmm. So people can see, well, they're supposed to have seven members and only list three, yeah. but I see five on TV and they're not even the right people. Uh, and I will I'll email somebody I will find out that, that committee that self appoints. And I got a note to myself to send you something else, but uh, <laughs> I, you'll, you'll get a couple of emails okay. from me. Thank and you. I take it that you all got uh, the deed and all the yep. couple things we did. Sent. Uh, I'm a pack rat and I okay. try to help out. Yep. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Bennett. We appreciate Thank it. Can I, can I have a question? Of course, Ken. So basically, on the insurance stuff, that's that's all projected, right? Based at the beginning of the year, because the numbers for insurance rates and premiums don't come out until later on after the budget are even finalized, correct? I thought we were contacted. The retirement you can pay right up front, and you know that, and, and the discount has been listed mm -hmm. in the thing. The same thing with the health insurance. There is a way, and because it has been done, you pay that up front and yeah. you get a discount, discount. right? Right. Now I know then you look on the revenue sheet and you see insurance money from the enterprise funds. Right. Because the town has the budget. It's like having a grant. Yep. You know, you can't budget for the grant because state one, right. Here's 87,000 for a plate mount and they take it back. That's we're right. getting that money because we already spent it. Yeah. So I don't want, I'm not trying to, to support or say budget to zero. Right. The 17 was, that was, Pretty tight, right? You know, six cents. That's a that's, good that's, math. That's a good but, day right there, yeah. But you know, mm -hmm. and also to me, you too. should know the employees, the plans, mm -hmm. and yes, somebody can say, you know, my husband just got laid off. Uh, I need insurance, or he just changed jobs, and man, they got crappy insurance. So town's got cat lag. I, I, and that's yeah. no lie. That's right. people have left course, Templeton employment and gone someplace else and said, you know. And it benefits over in Templeton really good. I mean, that's absolutely. Well, the, uh, if we were short, fact. you could always have money in the reserve fund so, and get it for that. Like I said, I'm not a proponent of budgeting to zero, right? No. But 320 was 
that would yeah. be a stretch to, to, to sit here with a straight face and say that's good budgeting. Yeah. When I said that, 100,000, yeah. that's better. But, mm. you know, 200,000 and this one fund, like I said, that's four years. Right. And, and I'm watching, I looked at 22 mm. and, and 22 went up. We have 118,000 left over from 20. And I mean, for 21 and 22 went up 100 and over 100,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking out, yeah. doing the math right. of uh, trying to guess what will be left over next year and see sure. how close I get. Just a, but instead of, instead of padding, it's well, well, it, yeah, well, you know, and there was there was a method to that madness yes. because there was a mess. And oh, I understand that. I understand the, that. The, the guy was. But telling that you want me to fix it. I, it, it's I just, believe. I believe it was that fixed. And if now you want, want money, us. you need extra money, be upfront, tell people, and they will understand that, you know, they really will. I have very seldom in all the years that I've been doing a, going to town meeting, seeing town meetings say no to a reasonable request. Well, no, they spend $3 million at a drop of hat and argue all night for 500 bucks. Yeah. One of the things we have not done well that's is their, that's to their, look at the end point. of the year finances yeah. over a number of years to help do the budget for this coming year. Can, uh, can I ask something? Yeah. Instead of public comment, you put the question and answer in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. that's Might not be an awful idea. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Be good to that dog when you get home. <laughs> Bev, yes. Do you have any comments that I can make right now? This was a very good meeting. We touched on some subjects that are difficult, but they have to be answered and they have to be dealt with. And I think if we can plan, have a real plan for anything we do, that will stop a lot of the repetitive stuff that we've done over the years, where we've gone, dived into a project been up to our eyebrows and found out that the water was six feet taller. So that I think in working with the selectmen is going to work. I think that's a good thing. Thank you, Bev. Thank John? You. Thank you for coming. I uh, just had uh, a couple of duels to you. I mean, obviously I'll talk to the Lions Club yep. and I'll bring up the attention of, of the leadership. Um, yeah, it's great meeting. Good. Thank you, John. April. Um, I just, the two comments that Jeff had when you had mentioned that the meeting minutes were posted, um, I again noticed that we still have two websites um, online to on town site. Are we still paying for both those town sites? The question for another time. Yeah. Um, just paying for one according to the uh, TA who just uh, raised his finger. Okay. Yeah. And then um, in regards to the meeting minutes, the July 1st meeting minutes were posted on the 26th. And the July 15 meeting minutes are posted on the 27th, and they are online. Okay. Nothing? Okay. Very good. Well, as you mentioned about, uh, about the, the, the posting plan and stuff, uh, there, there is a requirement of what the is that you have to make. But the, 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 the really thing that, that, that struck me is that. We still don't do a good job overall of managing the town finances per se. Yeah. We need to take and end up getting a better handle on that for the coming year because over the over the over the future, as we all see it, we're going to have requirements from the school as well as from the town on those funds. If we don't do a good job, we're going to be in trouble. Other communities. Uh, have actually, I think it's the town of Arlington. Uh, they actually, and they have a finance committee of 25 people. Same gentleman has been the chairman for the last 20 years or so, 25 years. Uh, he, he comes to the association meeting. Every five to eight years, they actually have in their plan. I don't know how they do it. They have in their plan an actual override for more money because they know that's going to happen because of certain circumstances. But they're a much bigger community. Mm. They have industry too. They, and they have industry. We're not growing in that aspect. 
that's the thing that's hurting us as as, as the community is you, we're putting it on the backs of all, all the taxpayers and, and the homeowners and that has some of that has to take an end up uh, changing I look at other communities that I go through and I see they have brought stuff in they've got better facilities than we have and I look at the a town that I go through all the time, such as Rutland, and I see they have, and Phillips is the same thing. They have a, a, a public safety building with fire and police are in. Fire department only in the spring. The police department put the house behind the Phillips and Bylaw. Oh, they did because at one four years ago. Oh, at one time, at one time they were. Um, oh, thank yeah. you for, uh, but I, I see that. And some other communities, and I say we need to do better. I mean, Holden, I go through all the time, and of course, Holden is is grown, and they've got a lot of a, a lot of money that they got other than from from their their their, their uh, real estate taxes on individuals. So uh, with the future, we have to take and end up starting to worry about our finances overall. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have no comment this evening other than thank you for the good discussion. And a reminder to the membership that there is no meeting next week. We voted that out. Um, there will be our next regular scheduled meeting will be Thursday, August 19th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. in this room. And at this time, I will accept the motion to adjourn. So move. I have a motion to have a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. aye.